to progressive discussions and particularly the Facebook group, International Brotherhood of Palavans. I am your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 and Progressive Discussions. And uh, I am the founder of this group back in 2012. Um, it is a group that represents old school, uh, physical fitness, ancient warrior fitness, we honor the martial arts of different forms from different cultures, different parts of the world. Drug-free, safe, and I cannot overemphasize the word safe, physical fitness, but I also incorporate uh, progressive populist politics, uh, AKA, otherwise known as the uh, Absolute proven truth by truth seekers. Reality, proven reality, like what the finest scientists in the world tell you. And if you choose to ignore them, then you will meet your dire fate. You know, you can't, you can't argue with success. You can't debate the real proven hard-hitting truths of life how could you argue with true facts how could you argue with them how could you argue with evidence i want to start off by um giving seven lucky bells for the show okay followed by the old uh, ed norton honeymooners thelma bell For those that are familiar with the Honeymooners and our fans, followed by the world's largest and loudest jingle bell. Followed by humble, mellow, old-fashioned jingle bells. Happy Krampus Day. And, uh... <laughs> Winter solstice, Yule, we're no fool, and um, happy Festivus for the rest of us. Even though it's not even summer yet, it's not even Cinco de Mayo yet, right? We're in we're we're in the middle of spring, uh, uh, early early April. So that this is part of the uh, April Fools for um, progressive discussions right i'm giving i'm paying homage to uh to uh, uh 
a pagan Christmas where Jesus was not even born in December. And all the traditions of Christmas and Easter were, were based on paganism coming from the, uh, I believe, the Holy Roman Empire, all right, or Simon Magus and the Emperor Constantine. I wonder if Constantine was constipated. Anyway, let me blow my old-fashioned police whistle. I thought it was a train whistle, but... All right, that's enough. Now, you're probably wondering, where is my co-host? Where is Jeff Sambella? Well, I called him, and his voicemail picked up. So I have no idea. I told him if he wants to go on the show audio, just type me a message here on the show in the, uh, in the comments column on the right-hand side of this video, and I will simply call him uh, via the Internet like I normally do. So the show must go on. Uh, I know that. I was told by certain individuals on social media. Uh, some of them are from the fanatical, very anal retentive craft beer group groups that talk about fine wine and craft beer, and they're very uh, sometimes whiskey, bourbon, whatever, scotch, and they're very anal retentive and serious and very rigid about it. <laughs> so much so are they fanatics and very similar to these uh, uh, conservative uh, evangelical zealot religious freaks so much are they that way that even when they go off the air they must continue to review craft beer they can't even have an open forum and, and, and relax and let loose and have fun open topic oh no no did you they continue to critique beer because they have no life they're geeks they admit that they're beer geeks but i i didn't i didn't believe that they really were bona fide geeks anyway certain individuals not just from the this group these groups that i used to do live shows with uh and it was fun while it lasted until human nature until personality conflicts came into play um other people too, even from the fitness world and fitness industry, they want me to be like Barney the dinosaur, you know, like similar to what the, the wooden Trojan horse Zay Ricardo uh, tried to get me to do in a very pushy way. They want me to be like Barney the dinosaur. They want me to turn into a Pollyanna. You know, I love you. You love me. I blow sunshine up your ass. And I, I tell you, things that you want to hear uh, i speak softly uh, i speak about pleasant things to make you feel good instead of telling you the real truth and being honest so they don't want honesty they want sunshine blown up their ass even people that i thought were in agreement with me that were on my side they want to make nice nice uh, even though they they may act tough and macho uh, privately. When they send me private message, their macho is all hell. But, you know, in reality, they, they were, they're worried about their popularity. They're worried about collecting people on social media, having a, a billion people on their friends list that like them. They're desperately worried about being fucking liked. I was even told, you know, uh, try not to curse. Well, you know, some things in life get under your skin. And I look at it this way. There are many selfish, uh, self-centered, self-serving, greedy, corrupt, crooked, downright underhanded people in this society that are scumbags. They, they are bona fide scumbags. They lie to you. They're pathological liars. They live behind a facade, they're fake people, and they are, most of all, they are adults. They are supposed to know better. They have freedom of choice. They choose to be the rotten people that they are. 
They're not children. So if an adult chooses to uh, go down that path and be that way, well, do they deserve my respect? No. Do they deserve to be talk, spoken nice, nicely and softly to? No. Do they uh, deserve any consideration whatsoever? People that are just rotten and selfish? I say no. So, I'm speaking soft right now, but I'm being honest. I'm not yelling. And I only use, so far, I only use one curse word. So it's not too bad. I mean, other people, Jesse Ventura, Howard Stern, I've heard them curse, curse many times on their uh, live stream shows. So I'm not doing too bad, but I believe if I give the facts, and I do, like Teddy Roosevelt said, speak softly and carry a big stick. I think that's a good policy <clears throat> to go by. Now, I want to begin by uh, having a sip of uh, not liquor, but a, uh, a combination of unsweetened mango juice with passion fruit juice and some filtered ice water in my wonderful Polyvon Paisley Bug, which is very applicable to the International Brotherhood of Polyvons, which this live stream show is on. Oh, Donald Boos has joined us. Welcome, Donald Boos, originally from Dumont, New Jersey, now residing in San Diego, California, because he was a career Navy person. Or maybe he was just in the Navy and decided that he, he loved San Diego. Too bad it's expensive to live there, from what I understand. But then again, it's not so cheap living here in northeastern New Jersey. <clears throat> um, after many years of hard work and dedication and devotion and bringing, sometimes bringing her work home with her, and uh, multitasking, uh, which some people actually brag about. Uh, it, it, you're actually being used by the corporation when you're doing that. So they can, you know, they can downsize, they can lay off more people, and you get suckered into multitasking. After, after busting her ass for all these years, my sister recently got laid off, and it was a company connected with the pharmaceutical industry, and, uh, Business got slow. They lost a big client, and they started laying people off. And uh, what are they? What? What was their choice? To have a bunch of inexperienced punks, fresh out of school, that work for less money. And and they got rid of the most expensive employees that were experienced, and well seasoned, and very reliable, and very devoted. And they got rid of them. So. It, Forget about being devoted to a company. It's, it's, it's all about the bottom line with these companies. They don't care. They have no loyalty to you if you work hard and are really good at what you do. They don't, they don't give a shit. They would love to have two weeks notice or more from you if you're leaving, but they sure as hell won't give you two weeks notice if they want to get rid of you. Now, healthcare. You know how uh, the argument against uh, universal single payer health insurance uh, has been b bouncing back and forth uh, quite often in this uh, uh, pre uh, um, 2020 election campaigning campaign uh, uh, era for 2020 and uh, for those that do not know me, I am a democratic socialist, a Bernie Sanders supporter. I believe in single payer, universal health care, and free public college universities. Just like Scandinavia, the most perfect, uh, uh, most fair political and societal system ever developed, and, and they are successful, and I do not see any Scandinavians trying to immigrate to the United States, by the way. 
Yom ben Yemeni Sefi Dishemit bottles. They stay over there because they know how fucking good that they got it. They know how good they got it. The only problem is it's too cold over there. I can't take the cold. They're near the Ar Arctic Circle. You think Odin and Thor are going to warm me up? Yump and Yimini. But anyway, uh, Iowans. United Healthcare just threw 425,000 Iowans off of their privatized health insurance. So uh, the, the argument of people having the freedom to keep their own privatized health insurance, well, there you go. The, the, the scumbags, the sleazy scumbag insurance CEOs have the right to throw your ass off the policy. Hardy, har, har, the joke's on you. you. You trust the CEO more than, than a big government? Well, it would have to be honest big government. You know, but uh, let me see what Donald has to say. Thanks for mentioning me. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, well, thank you for for saying something and contributing and uh, and spending some time with me because uh, I don't know, no, not too many people do it when Jeff is with me. I don't know. I don't know why. I, I mean, uh, I appreciate it. You're a riot, James. Oh, you like all my props. Hold on. Let me, let me blow the little London Bobby whistle. Masher, Masher. That, oh, remember Mrs. Choate from Seinfeld with the marble rye bread when Jerry Seinfeld stole her, her, her loaf of marble rye? That man stole my marble rye. He, I got mugged. Oh, my God, my ears. Thelma, please step into the dining area. With my coffee, I would like two lumps. If you keep on ringing that bell, you'll get two lumps. Hey, it matches the background, Donald Boost. Oh, oh, a little, a little more of the loudest jingle bell known to man. Oh, oh my, the decibels are killing me. Going to Cabo San Lucas in two weeks. Yes, you do remember that episode. Listen, Cabo San Lucas. We also are, um, not only are we restaurant and buffet critics here, and I, I went to the Royal Hibachi Buffet today, and I took video, of course, and it, it will go on the internet. It will go on YouTube and uh, the Facebook group uh everything is food as well as my facebook page anyway i digress we're also uh consumer advocates and we are travel critiques uh resort critiques donald boost i trust has a very good eye for value and when he goes on a resort we, when he goes to a resort and they don't live up to the itinerary, they don't live up to the description of the vacation. Donald is not shy about telling you how he felt. Like one time he went on a cruise. Uh, I don't know if it was a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour, or or it was a booze cruise, or it was a booze and food cruise with gambling. I don't know what it was, but it was off of San Diego somewhere, and then they were kind of cheap with the liquor, I think, right, Donald? You said you weren't too happy about that cruise. Just like I was not happy about a cruise that I took uh, on the Spirit of New Jersey out of Liberty State Park in Jersey City. I got screwed on that one. And uh, the reason being is the food was outstanding, right? I went up. I filled my plate, I sat down, I absolutely loved the food. I got up to get seconds, they took all the food away. So why, how is it a buffet? Guess what it was all about? Some Broadway show 
with these uh, uh, namby-pamby, uh, bubbly, metrosexual men prancing around, singing and dancing. That's what it was about. It was the NYE party cruise on the spirit of San Diego. So we're, we're, whatever coastal city the ship leaves from, it's the spirit of whatever. <coughs> oh, by the way, that old time sailing vessel that is docked in San Diego, it's a big, uh, was it the India Star or the Star of India? It's very haunted. It was on the Travel Channel hit show, The Ghost Adventures. The paranormal investigators with Zach Bacon's they spent the night locked inside the, I think it's called the Star of India. It is very haunted. And they got a lot of uh, uh, recordings, voices and everything. I mean, it's without a doubt, it's haunted. I think it's called the Star of India or something of that nature. And uh, it has, in its lifetime, uh, it has seen many voyages, and uh, it is uh, now, I guess, a museum, a floating museum, mar maritime mu museum, uh, that they decided to give to the city of San Diego, and it's it's it's, it's in a harbor. Yeah, it's it's an old time sailing vessel, you know, a wooden sailing vessel, big too. Uh, I think it was a, it was a, a car old time cargo ship. Sailing vessel, yeah. You know, you know, I'm not positive about the name. I think it's the Star of India, but anyway, it's very haunted. So anyway, yes. Uh, Donald is our official um, uh, vacation resort critic because I don't really get away that much because I got a lot of a lot of things on my plate right now. But Donald gets around. Instead of run around Sue, he's like run around Donald. Remember that song, run around Sue? But anyway, let me finish up the uh, politicking. What do we got here? Uh, oh, oh, this is something many of you people can relate to. I noticed that when I'm online, the pop ups, the sales oriented web pages that are called pop ups, sometimes it's an entire page that always ends up trying to get you to part with your hard-earned money there's no way to get rid of it there's no x in the upper right hand corner to close it out and i click on everything imaginable and the more i click the deeper into the sales pitch i get and i have to end up rebooting my iphone or if it happens to be, well, if it's on my PC, um, I have Adblock on Google Chrome, which happens to be highly rated, but it, it's not 100%. None of them are 100%. It's a, it's a pop-up blocker. I can't get rid of the friggin' pop-up, especially when it relates to my iPhone. Very intrusive, very pushy obnoxious it, 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 they they do not want you to be able to close out their pop-up their ad and i don't know if there's a good re reliable pop-up blocker for an android or an iphone i really don't know um but donald you you're familiar with such a an annoyance um it's very pushy you know and uh speaking of annoying and pushy you're all familiar with the uh jared k jeweler uh, um what, what's the other one zales fine jewelry commercials during certain holidays here's a pair of cubic zirconia stud earrings beautiful big cubic zirconia stud earrings from the dollar zone in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. Aren't they gorgeous? Aren't they gorgeous? Aren't they aesthetically pleasing to the eyeballs? Eye candy, and of course a buck. So what I'm trying to say is, it's like my retired, very wealthy Uncle Phil used to say, prestige is all in the mind. And 
the look, the, the look of, a, of a diamond is all in the eyes <laughs> of the beholder. So there you go. The beauty of cubic zirconias, which can be equal to a perfect investment grade diamond, whereas diamonds are no longer an investment because the De Beers Diamond Mining Company controls the exportation of diamonds out of South Africa. So they control the price. There are, there are tons of diamonds being mined. They're not precious stones as opposed to rubies, sapphires, and sapphire, emeralds, and soon to be aquamarine. Those are precious. Okay, Donald says, looks like the real thing. Can't tell the difference. Yeah, that's what I said when I, when I, when I scrutinized it at the dollar zone. I thought it would be excellent prop, an excellent example you know, for, for the consumer advocates. Now, <clears throat> when speaking of Cabo San Lucas, I guess because it's at the end of the very long Baja Peninsula, which is, believe it or not, 2,000 miles long, I had no idea it was that long, in 24 hours of driving. Uh, it was extremely hot there and um, actually humid compared to the rest of Baja, which is the Sonora Desert. Now, I'm sure Donald is going to fly there because he's smart. Either fly or take a cruise. So, um, not driving through the desert with no cell phone signal, signal or Wi-Fi, you know, watching the buzzards drag roadkill dragging roadkill off the highway and, you know, watching cute roadrunners uh, zoom by and going around dangerous mountain roads with no railing. Nah, he's going to do it the smart way. Cabo San Lucas, he's probably going to stay at a resort on the beach where he's going to enjoy the, uh, the nice, cool, dry, refreshing breeze coming off the Pacific Ocean. And he's going to probably go on that glass bottom boat uh, tour. And he's probably going to go maybe party boat fishing for Marlin or whatever happens to bite his hook. <laughs> bite his hook. Maybe, maybe some, some good looking maze will open his, uh, his hotel door while he's still sleeping. Thinking they're, they're, they're going to go in there and change the sheets. Meanwhile, Donald's going to be laying there in his birthday suit. <laughs> What is what is what is submarine periscope up? <laughs> periscope up. Oh God, you gotta love it. Let me see. I think Donald's probably cracking up right now. Flying, yes, you are you are smart cookie. That's the way to do it. You fly and you go directly to the resort by the beach. Uh, you know that. You know what else they had? They had a, ba a bachelor party cruise where they 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 brought the gentleman, and I use that term loosely, on a cabin cruiser with a whole bunch of young uh, chicky poos wearing uh, the same pink t-shirt with matching pink caps, aka whores, and they take them to this very private. A deserted island where they frolic for a certain amount of hours. I guess they have cases of beer and liquor and food and everything, and they leave them there. And then they pick them up later on, and I'm sure they they have uh, sex in the uh, on the beach and in the uh, in the in the pristine uh, shallow tropical waters or whatever. And nobody sees them really supposedly except those with other boats and binoculars anyway and then they pick them up i thought it was interesting of course they were all young and and they and they were they had ample breasts and uh, you know but anyway i digress but the glass bottom boat tour was uh, fascinating because there were stingray jumping out of the water actually how they get the fish excited to do all this is they chum the water they throw food in the water buckets of food and then 
the fish just go nuts. And uh, but it was very memorable. Periscope up, way up. Oh, you're not staying at a resort. That means you're staying with someone you know who has a place down there, perhaps. Some woman with, as we say in Italian, scalora. Huh? Eh? Somebody you know, Donald? Somebody that lives near the near the ocean that's is she Mexican? Well, she's got to be really well off if she's Mexican and she lives near the water in Cabo San Lucas. Ooh, would you? You met, you met yourself a, a, a Goyle friend? A young lady? Perhaps? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh no, no. You, you, you found yourself a new girlfriend. Ah, you're going with her. But you're not going, you're not going to a resort with her? I'm confused. She owns a place down here? You're not going to a resort. So maybe your new girlfriend has, has a getaway down there, a place. Not supplying that information. Ah, you're not, you're not supplying, uh, you're, you're not even telling me uh, who, who you're going down with. Okay, gotcha. Smart guy, because this show generally goes on YouTube. So, good. Anyway, you're going to have a good time, uh, I'm sure. And uh, it's great that you're able to go on vacation once again, like you used to in the old days. You know, uh, I don't know if you have a genie in a, in a lamp or you have, you have a leprechaun. One of my little Irish guys with the shillelagh. I have no idea, but uh, you know, your 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 life is getting lucky, and I'm very happy for you. I'm very happy for you. I'm surprised that Jeff Sambella hasn't showed up. He says he doesn't want to bash anybody anymore. Well, I, I told him I, I wouldn't be honest if I honestly, you know, became like Barney the Dinosaur when I uh, record videos on the Internet and go live. And I was like, I love you and you love me. And I think life is wonderful and people are wonderful. It wouldn't be me. I mean, he used to be venomous like me. I, you know what? The show must go on. Who said that? P.T. Barnum. The show must go on, Donald Boos. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The human race disappoints me or every time, but the show must go on. Yes. Gotcha. All right. <coughs> I got you, Don. Okay, now, little fitness talk. We have a store that I was introduced to because one opened up in my area called Five Below which means everything is either $5 or under $5. All right. Um, I found this, which they happen to also sell at Walmart, but this is it's five bucks. Extra heavy duty resistance to complete with door anchor as a bonus. And the neoprene rubber um, handles. Great bargain. But of course, what I did, because it wasn't enough resistance for me. I was too strong. I'll show you what I did. Right, here's the door anchor in action. You can place it anywhere on the door, Donald. If you go on, excellent for going on vacation because you know, the door, the bathroom doors in hotel rooms are usually very strong. And you can just place them anywhere on that door. And I will show you what I did. Oh, by the way, I use these as workout gloves. I get them from the Dollar Tree. A dollar a pair. Got, got the rubber. Excellent workout glove. Two for a dollar. And, and it's great for you ladies that go shopping and you have a problem opening up a jar. Let's say it's a jar of dill pickles. 
you put this on and that jar snap will just open right up see we give consumer tips on the show all right now okay there's the uh neoprene rubber handle there's the extra heavy duty tubing all right here's the door anchor all right it has a hard rubber ball on the end which enables the door anchor to catch any portion of the door you choose to put it you, you shut the door on that and you do your exercises but what i had to do for extra resistance is i got one i, I buy these um heavy duty stainless steel clips okay i think mountain climbers sometimes use them and um, I put industrial um, warehouse pallet bands. This happens to be the smallest one they make. I have various sizes. Uh, Mr. Ken Thiessen turned me on to these because this is what they used in uh, WWE uh, training camp uh, to exercise with. The, these are more challenging than any fitness tubing or bands. At any power bands the the pallet band when you think about it I mean just think about how much weight is on a pallet in a warehouse and and it could be hundreds of, if not thousands of pounds and these same this same amount of tonnage goes on cargo ships and containers right so they come in all different sizes so I hooked it on of course there is another one on the other end and you this is my idea and you can just attach as many pallet bands as you want and you have progressive resistance don't estimate don't do never never underestimate power bands or tubing not not the ones at kessler institute for rehab the, the, the fettuccines they make you play with that that's for like accountants you know and you know that that's for like Woody Allen. You know that's not for real alpha men. But you got to get power bands and extra heavy duty tubing. And this, of course, this is held by a solid rubber ball at the end, and it, it's in the hole. How how they get it in, is, I have no idea. But anyway, that's my little invention. I don't know, Zuckerberg is trying to fuck with my video. I don't know why it, gets, it fades and then it clears. I know he fucks with me with uh, Facebook Messenger because he's a control freak. He's a geek. Probably got beat up by uh, the jocks in high school like all fucking geeks do. And, 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 and his, the power of owning Facebook is his penile extension. That's his manhood. I used to have geeks try to push my buttons and you know and I and, and, and I beat them up. And then this is the this is the largest industrial warehouse pallet band. And I thank Mr. Ken Thiessen for introducing me to these. These you see they're they, I don't know what kind of glue they use, but it's a continuous loop, right? And it's glued by ah God knows what because it is powerful this is hard as hell okay and just in case i put the same steel clips from home depot on the end in case i ever need to attach them to something but lately what i've been doing is i've been doing a drop set where i'll do curls let's say or either reverse curls for the forearms or regular curls and then without resting i'll grab a pair of these and step on the ends and continue to do the curls or whatever exercise you're doing so i just want to introduce people to what real hardcore exercising is all about if you if if you still think this is a toy go on youtube and look up a video by scooby spelled like scooby-doo He's a man that's in his 60s. He's a old school bodybuilder and personal trainer, and he tells you the real truth about everything. And a German American guy, great sense of humor, 
he wears like a Gilligan hat. And uh, you'll see how well built he is. And he has some videos going into detail about power bands and just how challenging they really are. And you should never under underestimate any power bands. So that takes care of that. Now let's see what we got here. Uh, maybe Donald Boos has some words of wisdom there. I will check it out. Okay, all right. Seven bells for for Donald's vacation. And I think he, you had a great time in Las Vegas. I know that. All right. <clears throat> um. So we talked about, okay, little mysticism, Donald Boos. I'm sure you're going to appreciate that. I have co genuine copper divining rods from an occult web, web store online. You probably have seen them before. Copper divining rods. Will Donald Boos have a wonderful time in Cabo San Lucas very soon? Yes, Donald. When they come together, it means yes. When they go apart, it means no. Uh, and I put these straws in it so there's no friction. And there's no way I can, I can be moving them. Donald Booth, his new vacation, I mean, his upcoming vacation in Cabo San Lucas, will it exceed his expectations? Yes. Good. I'm very happy. Um, will, you, will you be uh, dining uh, uh, out of your own pocket, or is there some kind of a package uh, where the meals will be included? If you're still there, Donald, uh, how is how how will the food be uh, um, supplied? Would it be like you know? You have to bring pesos down there and, you know, buy breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day on your own, or is there a package? Um, Donald has lots of experience in travel. Um, did, um, when I was in uh, Baja at some of the hotels, did they deliberately withhold negative information from their advertisement to sucker people to stay there? In other words, do they lie a lot, the owners of these Mexican resorts? No, oh, so they Frito banditoed us when I was there with Natalia, the, this guy that owned this hotel in uh, Bahia de Los Angeles, which is on the, the beginning of the Sea of Cortez. Uh, it might be the beginning of Southern uh, Baja. I, I don't think it's part of North, Northern Baja, but it might be the beginning of uh, Sur, S-U-R. I think that's Southern Baja. Um, it was like um, there was no lock on the back door facing the bay, no lock at all, uh, which is not good. <laughs> um, there was um, no Wi-Fi that will, will allow you to do really anything. Um, it was really not much of anything. I mean, the water pressure was, was a terrible little trickle. You know, if you wanted to take a shower or whatever, it's almost like the movie I saw, the old Western with John Wayne, where they had the, the bucket with the holes in it and the midget would pour the hot water in a bucket. You know, that was like the first shower. That was so funny. It was really pretty pretty bad and he you know and, and like the owner 
his name was, uh, he called himself William. He had like a waspy name. I know that wasn't his real name. And, and he said he used to work for the, he says, oh, I've worked in New Jersey. I worked for the Marriott Corporation. Oh, wow, you've been to New Jersey? You worked at Marriott? Okay. Um, and his name was, he called himself William, and he had like a, a waspy last name. I knew that wasn't his real last name. So I said, you know, in Spanish, uh, William is Guillermo. He got defensive. He goes, no, my name is William. <clears throat> so Natalia explained to me that some people, some Mexicans or Latinos, uh, they do not want to uh, embrace their heritage or they, they're embarrassed or they... They feel they feel more they feel more special if they use use a stage name that is uh, waspy. You know, like in the old days, actors and comedians would use like a name like Roberts or Williams or a waspy name. You know, I just thought it was funny. So what if he's Guillermo? Guillermo is William. Well, you know, it's like Roberto or. Uh, or Juan is John, or um, uh, Jose is Joseph, or uh, things of that nature. I only know James and uh, Giacomo, I think. It's, that's an Italian. I don't know about James in, in, in uh, Spanish, but anyway. I'm not doing all inclusive this visit, so it's going to be uh, everything's, everything's going to be a la carte. Never been to a timeshare presentation. Could not tell you. Well, let's put it this way: they tried to sucker that on me and my guests in Cancun. I didn't go because it was not in the itinerary. Like they, they weren't, the, the package did not say it was mandatory for me to sit through a presentation for a timeshare, a half hour, 45 minute presentation. You know, where they sometimes, what they'll, what they'll do is they'll offer you a free, uh, like seafood buffet or whatever, you know, and, but you, they'll say it's mandatory. They'll, they just try and to get you to go to one. But the package that I went on uh, with the Moon Palace, and um, which was very exclusive, and then uh, the Royal Solaris, they did not like force us to go to a presentation. It was just so much money, all inclusive. It was about uh, $800 per week. All you can drink, all you can eat 24 seven. And I repeat, 24 seven hotel transfer whatever blah 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 plane fare i know cancun i'm not cancun uh um, i meant to cozumel so um I, I like i like the whole diving and uh, snorkeling on the reef deal and fishing um even though i see a lot of fish even right at the beach if i put my mask on i see loads of fish uh, what's that place? Uh, Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic is an outstanding value. Uh, a, a great bang for the buck. And, th and those Dominican women, they got some bodies on them too. And I'm sure when they see the, the American gringo down there, they start massaging you as soon as you get off the plane. You know? Yeah, a friend of mine paid only $600 uh, for one week in uh, Punta Cana through, through CheapCaribbean.com, which was found through TravelZoo.com, which specializes in packages. But, you know, you got to hold them to it. I mean, I, I went to, when I went to Margarita Island, Venezuela, it was not all inclusive. Uh, their El Presidente whatever, uh, Americana, whatever the fuck they call them, the resort, 
what happened was in the itinerary it said that there was a free shuttle because it was away from everything it was really way out there away from the from any town or the main city of Porlamar, which is the only uh, city in on Margarita Island, which was like a desert. It was all cactus. So anyway, they said there was going to be free shuttle supplied by the hotel. Well, guess what? The hotel management decided to do away with the free shuttle, and every time we wanted to go anywhere, and I mean anywhere, without getting screwed over by the hotel restaurants. All right, and to go shopping, we had to take a taxi. Guess what? We got fucked over again by the taxi. I hear the Bahamas, uh, I hear the taxi cab drivers there are a bunch of crooks. They, you, you, this is what kills me, Donald. Now, a poor, a poor country that really relies on tourism for their economy because it, they're in the tropics and they really do not have much of anything else uh, to keep their economy uh, thriving. So they rely on tourism. You would think these people would be really great to the tourists, that they would kiss their ass. They really, they wouldn't piss you off as a, as a, a European or American tourist they would, or Canadian tourist. They would really do the right thing by you. But they do so much to fuck you over. It's almost like they they want to be miserable and poor. Let me tell you something. Once I'm fucked over, I'll never return to that resort or that region. They ask me if I'm returning. I said no. No, I'm not returning ever again. You know. I should have said, "Do you like apples?" You like Manzana? And they would have said, yeah. And I would have, then I would have told them and said, well, how do you like them apples? It's like, why are you fucking the bread and butter of your country's economy? It could be the Cayman Islands. It could be the Bahamas. It could be the U.S. Virgin Islands. What is it? St. Croix, St. Thomas. You know, uh, it could be Aruba. Curacao Bonaire, the Netherlands Antilles. I know my geography. Any of those countries that are poor, yet tropical, um, they desperately need tourism. You don't fuck over the tourists. Now, I'm glad you're here because I, I've been wanting to discuss this for years about resorts and about tourism and about my experiences getting fucked by these people in every which way they try to rip you off you know they uh it like in mexico in cancun it's really difficult to bargain with them in the flea market to uh to haggle with them they they're stubborn when it comes to lowering prices why because all these these stupid uh, waspy people with money from, you know, the Midwest, they don't haggle. You know, people that are not streetwise don't haggle. They see the price and because they're on vacation, they pay it. So maybe these Mexicans that own these little, little gift shops at the flea market, maybe they're used to these stupid ass suckers just paying the high top dollar for them. So they don't, you know, so then when somebody like me starts haggling with them, I got to be real sneaky about it. And I'll tell you exactly how I, I out Frito Bandito, the Frito Banditos. All right, let me see what the great Donald has to say. Have not been to Punta Cana yet. Donald Boo says Costa Rica uh, likes the gringo. Uh, yes, and they uh, I bet they appreciate the gringo. Costa Rica has it all. They have beautiful beaches. They have the rainforests. They have the Mayan pyramids. They have volcanoes. They have, they have it all. Costa Rica. San Jose is the capital of uh, Costa Rica. It's in the middle somewhere. 
And, oh, it's bi-coastal. Caribbean, Pacific Ocean. I don't think it takes that far to drive from one end to the other. Uh, very popular. Uh, many Americans uh, purchase condominiums and, uh, you know, homes and everything there. Hopefully the, the government there will remain stable and it will be a safe investment for, for the gringo, for the gringo to own real estate there, hopefully. But uh, they, they, it's good that they respect uh, the tourists. Now, I hear Belize has one of the finest reefs for diving, coral reefs. Belize is a uh, was a British colony. They speak English, and uh, I I hear people enjoy themselves there, and they're treated well, you know. Uh, but to treat them badly is like shooting yourself in the foot. That's your bread and butter. It's tourism. If you're a poor country, even though you, your country is a beautiful tropical paradise, you don't you don't want to disrespect your your lifeblood. This is how I un Frito Bandito, the Frito Bandito. I went, I walked around the entire uh, downtown Central in Cancun flea market. I decided what I wanted. I looked at it. The guy comes over right away. Senor, I know you love it. It's only $180. I said, what? 180 what? 180 pesos? No, 180 US dollars. I go, nah, nah, that's okay. I don't love it that much. And then he's following me and he's lowering the prices of walking away. I go, ah, nah, nah, nah. I go get some great Mexican food, have some ceviche or whatever, which is Peruvian anyway. I come back later, I take a peek. He smiled. He said, Yo, you come back. Yeah, okay, all right. And he tries to lower the price a little more. I go, ah, that's all right. What I did was I went to another uh, gift shop and I was looking at something. I asked for the person's business card. Then the next day, when I went back to the downtown central to the flea market, right? I stopped by and the guy said, oh, I know you loved it. I, said, I know, I knew you would be back. I knew it. He throws a price at me. I says, well, I don't know about your price, but this guy, and I, I put the business card right in front of his face. This guy offered me, and I give him a dirt cheap, I make up a price off the top of my head, like $40 or something like that from, you know, from the price he wanted to like, I make, it was a total bullshit story. The, the, this other business never, never offered me that low price. I, I made it up. I just showed him the card and he goes, okay, for you, yeah, you take it, you take it for that price. Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it up. That's how I uh, out, out Frito Bandito, the Frito Bandito. Uh, Salvatore Mercurio, the chef of the future. How are you, sir? Yes, they have it all. They have it all. Who has it all? Oh, Costa Rica, yeah. San Jose is like downtown Tijuana. Oh, it's like a wild and crazy town? No. That's not the... Uh, uh, what do you call uh, do you know the way to San Jose that that's the one in California right yeah was that uh, uh, Whitney Houston's uh, cousin back in the day what the hell was in Dion Warwick that's right anyway it's like well they're, they're all probably like downtown to you one you know what else is going on in Costa Rica uh, former, um, well, now he's a fat, hairy slob. Former uh, porno star from the 70s, uh, Ron Jeremy, started a rum manufacturing company and distribution, and he has it made in Costa Rica, probably with child labor. 
dirt cheap, and he calls it Ron de Jeremy because the word Ron means rum in Spanish. Play on words. Ron de Jeremy, he has a Facebook page. Ron Jeremy now is making rum. He's not, from what I understand, he's not producing uh, porno movies anymore unless he's using uh, Costa Rican women and paying them like uh, $10 a day or something, or maybe $5 a day. Listen, <laughs> I wouldn't put a pass through it. I wouldn't put a pass through it. Well, no sign of Jeff Zambello. That means Jeff wants to, does not want to get venomous. He wants to make extra nice, nice and um, have m massive amounts of friends on social media, which is his, it's his right. That's what he wants. He's an adult. He's a grown man. Personally, I can't do that. I can't bite my tongue. I can't turn into Barney the Dinosaur. I got to tell it like it is. That's it. No Pollyanna. No looking at the world with rose-colored glasses. But getting back. Getting back to um, physical fitness. If you concentrate on perfect form, and you could find out the perfect form by watching YouTube videos. There's tons, of, everything is on YouTube. There's so much on YouTube, you don't even need to hire a personal trainer, to be honest with you. If you stick to perfect, proper uh, exercise uh, uh, biomechanics uh, form, you won't get hurt. If you don't lift too heavy, you won't get injured. If you do it properly, you will gain, you will slowly progress without ever getting hurt. And you will reach your goals. But unfortunately, like with a lot of young guys, especially Americans, they think big. How much can you bench press is the first thing out of their mouth. How much can you curl? It's always about numbers. They don't ask, well, let me see your form. How do you do the bench press or the dumbbell flies or the shoulder press or, or rowing? Rowing is not just rowing. Too many people, unfortunately, use their arms and shoulders in the rowing exercise. You're, you're only supposed to do uh, use your scapula, your shoulder blades. It's supposed to be protraction and retraction of the scapula. The arms are just merely hooks in the rowing process when you're exercising your back muscles. That's all the arms are supposed to be, hooks. Um, and you can feel your scapula protracting and retracting. The same thing if you're doing curls. You're supposed to pronate and supinate your wrist. You know, as you're coming up, you try to twist your wrist inward. As you're coming down, your wrist ends up in the opposite direction. Pronation supination, pronation, supination. And you're only supposed to move your forearms in curls. You're not supposed to, you know, curl up up here. You're, only, you're supposed to keep your upper arm stationary against your uh, torso, against the sides, and just move the forearms. Okay, uh, you do the same thing with flies, uh, dumbbell flies. Uh, uh, the, the most experienced uh, bodybuilders and uh, people that really know what they're doing, what they'll do is they'll hang out mostly by the dumbbell rack in front of the mirror. They'll use dumbbells. They'll do, they'll do rowing with the straps, you know, heavy one arm uh, rowing with one knee on the bench. 
or they'll, you can use two. They'll do, uh, dumb, they'll use dumbbells because dumbbells have a longer range of motion than machines or barbells. Uh, and that's the part of the gym where the real experience big guys are. You'll notice they stay by the dumb, the dumbbell rack. You can do everything with dumbbells. You know, and I mean everything, every part of the body. But, you know, you should learn the proper strict form and, and you shouldn't worry about weight. You should worry about doing it slowly, going two inches, I'm, I'm sorry, two seconds up in the eccentric motion and uh, four seconds down in uh, in the negative, retrogravity. Um, or is it concentric, eccentric? Eccentric might be the negative. But, you know, yeah, the negative is, is coming down. It should be slow. Four seconds or longer. Some people do as much as like 15, 20 seconds lowering the weight. That's where you, you develop more is when you're in the lowering phase. Okay. Not in the contraction, not in the, in the lifting phase. So uh, you can achieve a lot with a pair of lighter uh, dumbbells, like a, a pair of 25 pound, 30 pound dumbbells uh, in strict form. You can get more results doing slow, uh, perfect form with, with those than you would, you know, uh, doing fast ballistic movements with heavy dumbbells where you're not really uh, challenging the muscles that uh, strenuously or deeply, and you're also uh, inviting injury, you know? So that's uh, the best thing I, I can, uh, to summarize uh, fitness advice for everyone, not just for young people, but people will do what they want anyway. And, uh, and that's, that's pretty much it uh, for the show. Uh, Donald Boos, I'm going to finish off the show by blowing the bosun's whistle. Um, you know, uh, oh, I wanted to tell you a story. Uh, my friend Jimmy, he, he won almost $700. You know how he won it in the casino? the penny machine there's a penny machine that has like a wheel that spins you know it has like uh it's different now of course you get you get a ticket you don't have the the quarters coming down you get the ticket and you put it in the machine you know so anyway it's a wheel that spins and uh when you you get the right configurations it it there's like a, a ball of energy that starts building up in the center of the Animated wheel, of course, animated. Starts building up and it looks like a supernova and then boom, it explodes and the thing spins. He ended up winning almost 700 bucks on a penny machine. And a penny machine. And we were there, it was up, must have been 3 a.m. in the Tropicana in Atlantic City. And we're, we're drinking Bloody Marys. And so we say, keep them coming, man, keep them coming. So we're drinking Bloody Marys with the stalk of celery. No, not not celery olives i love olives and he's give us like a half a dozen olives with each bloody mary so that's what we were doing we were drinking bloody mary's which is vodka right T tomato juice tabasco sauce whatever and yeah on a penny machine and i and what i'm going to tell him is when we go back let's look for that same penny machine let's go back there and it wasn't far from the the cash machine where you, you stick the ticket in. It was like maybe like, like, like five seconds walk. So it was like conveniently there. And uh, then you get the bullshit with the, the barmaid, you know, that brings you to drink. Ours was pretty friendly. She said, we look like a couple of uh, hoodlums, a couple of thugs. I go, why? Because of the way we talk? <laughs> That's so, uh, it's a good time. Went to Boogie Nights. Yeah, you saw that video. 
Very good. Reminds me of my Navy days. Yeah, you know, we've educated a lot of people. Every show is unique. Every show is different. Penny slots. Yeah, penny slots. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, the pennies sure add up on them with, with the right machine. The worst was um, Heidi's Beer Garden. They had a, a, a cartoon of a, a blonde girl with the, with the ponytails, pigtails, wearing the uh, Oktoberfest outfit. And uh, yeah, my friend didn't do so good. I didn't do so good on that either. Heidi's Beer Garden. Uh, spelled uh, capital B uh, I E R, the German way, and then there was um, there was uh, some Wonder Woman uh, uh, slot. There's a slot for everything. I mean, it's I, I think they do it to to captivate people. It's eye candy to attract you. You know, uh, every possible. Uh, old TV show or cartoon, you name it. They make a slot machine of it. And uh, <clears throat> just amazed me the amount of money that can be won. And, and, and you know, it's also, it, you're there, you're there longer playing it because it's a penny machine, you know. But uh, that, you know, I mean, it's always in their favor. The house always wins eventually if you if you don't bet with your head, not, o not over it like the commercial, you know. The same thing happens with lottery tickets. People play uh, the Powerball lottery. I think one jabroni, one like almost a billion dollars. What the hell was it? Was it like 700 million? Like only one person won. It was, it was, it was several hundred mil, million you won. But, you know, a person can play the Powerball lottery and they could buy like a hundred dollars worth of tickets and say, oh, I stand a better chance. You know how many people buy Powerball lottery tickets? You know, a hundred dollars worth of tickets is not going to really put a dent in your odds. Not that much. Now, one time, I didn't bring, I didn't have the uh, dividing rods. I used a pendulum. A friend of mine brought me to the racetrack, you know, the metal lanes, and I, I put the pendulum over the racing form, over the name of each horse, and... I won every race, but 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 they were the favorites, and I only bet two dollars, so you know the payout wasn't great, but it was fun. You know the, the pendulum would go counterclockwise means no, that's don't bet on that horse. What about this horse? No, and then finally it went clockwise. It starts spinning. Yes, bet on that horse. It was the favorite horse anyway. You know, almost. Almost like a sure thing. Almost. Anyway, thank you for joining me for this week's progressive discussion. I appreciate you guys. Uh, Donald Boos, Salvatore Mercurio. Mostly Donald, Donald Boos. Uh, you are my... Uh, oh... Uh, Vern uh, Uvesian, a very old friend, uh, gave the thumbs up that she liked the show. Uh, but I do appreciate Donald Boos. You're my co-host for this week, officially. Okay, here goes the bosun's whistle. Oh, you must have seen my T-shirt already, right? Irish, you were beer. Irish, you were beer. <laughs> Hey, my buddy gave it to me, a free t-shirt. <whistles> Welcome to our totally uncensored pirate ship. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend, too. And you...
have a great time in Cabo San Lucas if that's coming up soon. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.